King's Legacy is really starting to surge. King's Legacy a length away, draws level with Prague. King's Legacy wins the English sire. Strong finish. It is time to go behind the barriers for the Australian Turf Club with the family, the Snowdens. Peter, Paul, how are we? Well, thanks, Tim. Look, uh, what, what a great place this is. And uh, this has been, you know, it's not a field of dreams, but it has been a, a place where dreams have come true for you guys. Um, and obviously, let, let's just go back a couple of weeks. King's Legacy. What do you think, Paul? Oh, it's a fantastic effort. Obviously, um, you know, he's pretty well exposed leading into um, his slipper preparation. Obviously, first up in the slipper, but we always knew in the back of our minds that seven furlong and a mile is definitely going to exceed. Um, and it was, you know, two tremendous victories um, late, late in the carnival, which was great for the stable also. And that's what you were thinking, sires and champagne, Peter? Yeah, and, uh, and it's, uh, right from the get-go, as an early two-year-old, we had him in, and he even trialled here the first lot of Barry trials, and uh, his work was very good, and we thought he's one of our best colts that we had. He's such a good-natured horse and such a great mover. But when we put him down out of these half-mile jump-outs, he was getting lapped, and we're thinking, what's gone wrong? But uh, you know in your mind what he is, and he just couldn't get that much, that really early gate speed to be competitive early, so we just knew that It'll all come together later if we're patient and we're lucky. We had some really good owners behind us and with James that gave us that uh, that time that we just took him very quietly, took him st and didn't put any real pressure on him. We, we gave him a couple of teasing runs and he showed once he got to 1200 metres his first start, he, he produced something straight away and, and from then on uh, you know, we knew we had a nice horse going forward. And Who's the boss? <laughs> well, it depends what day of the week it is. <laughs> <laughs> but no, look, it's we were a team, and I, um, I always ask for Paul's input, and uh, there's, there's some things you'll disagree with me, and, and it's it's a trial and error. We'll go with each other to see how it works, and no one's a winner or loser, and what, no matter what decision we make, it's a joint decision, and we go with that. I think it's um, it's more about respect as well. Obviously, he's my father first and foremost, but um, he's been my boss for every bit of sort of 28 plus years or well, 20 probably yeah tw nearly 28 years so uh, yeah i think it's a bit more you know it's a bit more of a respect role than than a father figure but um it works well anyway it's i suppose it's unique and very valuable in the sense that you don't need to muck around you can just talk straight to each other because you're father and son you know like it's you don't need to go and go around the mulberry bush to get and make your point no Plenty of good adjectives come straight to hand I and mean, it gets just the point across quickly. But uh, we've been together a long time and we back each other's judgment. And Paul in Melbourne for about eight or nine years on his own, so he knows what he's talking about, and uh, that's why he's just he's a good sounding board for me. Uh, what my thoughts are, and if he's on the same page, you know we're, we're going the right direction. But there's some things we'll differ on, and you need that. You're going to be right all the time. Life's not about that. It's quite often you make a mistake and you pick up on it, learn from it, and try and improve from it. It's been a great synergy, hasn't it? The Hawks, the Inghams, uh, Darley, um, the, the way that it all yeah. formulated for both of you. Yeah, our background and the introduction we had, you couldn't have scripted any better really from where we started. Like we came from the country from Scone and, and uh, I rode up there and started to train a small team and uh, Inghams were just kicking up and they were looking for performance to help run the stable. And I thought was only a tyke at the time, he was only about four. And, uh, and to go there and see how it progressed from there eventually training there and then going out on our own and then being together now it's just been you couldn't have scripted any better what about red zell it's an emotional time isn't it because this mighty racehorse you know 16 and a half million something like that that he won uh he's retired uh he's retired when no one's on stage like the broad broadway's shut it's how do you guys put it into words it's that's where the the tough part is obviously you didn't get the send off um, publicly that, that you would have liked him to have because he's such a, a great horse to everyone and, and the stable also. But um, obviously there's um, the way he went out though, that, that was the most important thing for us. He went out on, on a high. Um, he competed at this top level for, for so long, um, probably longer than what a normal sprinter would would have. He only got sort of probably two, three years max at that really top level where I think he eclipsed a little bit further than that. And I think just goes the, the testament that he was never over pushed, uh, never over raced and, and retired um, a sound horse. So it was important to us to send him out um, on, on a good note and I think we achieved that. What about those two wins? We'll look yeah. at those two wins because he, he was one of those great competitors as well as being a champion. Yeah, he was, actually he was, um, and the funny thing was though, 
we all knew him for what he was. He, he was never a, in our mind a superstar, but he's a very genuine horse, always ran to his best every start he had, especially in his later life. From when he was four onwards, there was never a bad run in them. Uh, and uh, But he was never he was never the, the, the book his favourite horse. They always used to wind him out, thinking he's not good enough, he's not classy enough, he hasn't won enough group ones, and that was the case his first ever I think he was eight to one. And, uh, and he was he was flying at the time. He had really good form. He came off like four out of four or five out of five. He won the he won the Doonham ten thousand before he and he won the I think he won the shorts first up. He won the lead up coming up into it. Like his form was impeccable. Yet he got out to eight to one on the day and and uh, he was never going to get beat right from the get go. He just controlled the race and he was never going to get beat. And the same the second year they said we won it once. You won't do it again. There's too many. There's better horses there this year and he won't do it again. But he did and. That's, that was a win. No, it was just I've never had a feeling like it. Like we've had, we've enjoyed some good moments together and had some great results. But that first win was fantastic. But that second one, I was just numb. I couldn't believe. And we were confident we'd run well, but didn't think he'd ever do it. Uh, but to see him win as well as he did, I was just, it's just it's something you just you can't imagine until it happens, and you you don't know how you're going to feel until it does happen. And it was just a numbing feeling. It was sensational. Quite a contrast to where we are today and how we're racing at the moment with COVID-19, but can you put it into words, Paul, like what it was like? Because it is, it sort of encapsulates everything that's great about racing, yeah. doesn't it? You've got a whole team of individuals that own it, the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, I overuse that, but it's true with Red Zell. It's, it's the fairy tale um, that probably goes with the, with the race itself. Um, who would have thought it would have gained the heights that it's 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 got to um and then you see the ownership group it's it's a syndicated horse a syndicator's dream um to syndicate to, to to run off it um so it's 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 definitely made a lot of people happy in that ownership group but just um to have the the ability of that horse to win that race twice um it's certainly going to be a hard thing to to recapture in the in the future that's for sure how important is it now for him to have a good life beyond his racing days? Yeah, as Paul touched on there a while ago, for us, we, we knew the end was coming on this preparation. He's, he's still racing well, like he ran second the Lightning, he ran third, just got a bit of nose on the line in the TJ here, like his form was great. But he, we knew, he, he just could tell the horse just wasn't, he's probably three lengths below his best. And what you don't want to do, he's been such a good horse to us, we didn't want him to go out on a poor performance or a bleed or a, something go wrong you didn't want to go wrong so uh, to go out on your own terms and go out a winner if you've got that choice uh, it's the best way to go out and I think thank the ownership group for uh, agreeing with us that uh, Brisbane was going to be his last start to do them 10,000 when that plan was scrapped uh, that meeting was scrapped we, we thought then now's the time that we should give him he's going to have the best life of any horse ever uh, there's so many people putting their hand up wanting to look after him and, and we would love to have him in our stables forever because he loves stable life, he was sport rotten and just to be but be around people which he was used to, he loved the stable life, never spelled, he never spelled well because he always stood at the gate wanted to come back in, you know, he, he'd been brushed five times a day and fed three times a day and he's manicured every day, uh, you know, he's just, he had, he had a, a life of, of Riley really and uh, so we'd like to think you'll never ever uh, get, won't get have that sort of treatment. He'll get the best treatment of all, and uh, it hasn't been decided who gets him yet. But I'm, I can guarantee you'll have the best time of all. A lot of hands up on it. Well, it was a real risk, wasn't it? Like you've you've done a lot in this industry, and Paul, you have too. Uh, it was a risk coming together and saying, "Let's go for this," because there wasn't that paycheck. Um, but the punt that you took has come off with a lot of hard work and obviously shooting to win was fantastic. That that must sort of stand out to you guys now looking back. Yeah, it was a, our first year was was just that. Uh, we started in May, I think. So we had the first three months that year was about getting our feet on the ground and getting our head around the new start. The next 12 months was a real hard slog thinking, you know, we need to work hard. Well, we had some horse for John O'Shea left behind and one of them was shooting a win, so we got a really nice horse to kick off with. Uh, but didn't really, you know, we thought this could take a fair while to get going. But the win, we had won five group ones our first year. That was uh, um, bigger than our dreams could ever imagine. You know, it's we just got off running, worked hard, but we've always worked hard, so it's no different for us. But to get that that luck, you got to say, and it is about luck and getting the opportunity. We had some good owners behind us, and getting that luck behind us, and working hard at it, and taking advantage of it, things fell into place pretty quickly. Those first two shooting to win, those. those those early names as well stand out to you, Paul? Oh, for sure. Um, just a lovely cult to do anything with, obviously, and, and some very special uh, owners involved there, which have become family friends. Um, so, um, 
building those relationships again. Obviously, we've come from one prominent owner um, and just addressing one sort of person to to getting back to um, you know a quite a, a vast range of people and 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 a lot of a lot of owners um, and a lot to, that like to be hands on with their horses. Obviously, no. Um, you know weekly updates and, and videos and things like that getting back into that sort of system of things it's um the whole landscape's changed to when dad was training on his own to, to going through that ingham period for about 30 odd years where like i touched on it's just one one owner um where where we're, we're, we're sort of in contact with a, a large range of people now yeah he's a good name for a stallion too shooting to win absolutely <laughs> applicable i'm sure that's been used before finally uh sort of you came down from scone and you're just a little boy you've cut your teeth hanging out at Warwick Farm and what, what, what are what are all these because we're here for the Australian Turf Club what are all these courses you know you just you pitched up here on the hill but but Ramwick, Rose Hill, Canterbury, Warwick Farm I'd love to get your answer on both uh, both your answers on, on on the ATC racetracks. Gee well we like we come from Scone and we're born and bred there I was born there and rode there uh, I think I rode five six times in the city rode two winners uh, never rode a winner here we rode at Warwick Farm and Canterbury the two winners are over. Whenever I, I came here to ride, you just look back up and just think, how good is this? This is the, the best of the best. It's uh, we'll never ever get here. It's just good to come and visit once in a while. And, and then we, we accept the job at Warwick Farm. We're sort of we're close to Randwick, but we're not mm. there. But it's good to be part of the Sydney environment and and uh, go into all the tracks we thought were just over there. They're over there, but they're not here where we are. We're all around Scone Town with Crindive, Master Rock. And we're happy to be there too, but just to think we're going to be able to compete down here and be part of this was just a tremendous feeling. But then when I took over Crown Lodge, and uh, we, that's the first thing we said, hey, who ever thought we'd ever be here, uh, training at the, the best training centres, training for the biggest owner in the world, and have this great opportunity, how lucky are, are we? And then now we're here at Randwick and we're thinking the same thing. It used to be a day's trip to come to Warwick Farm to hear the other football stadium. Now we can we can jog there. So yeah, yeah. It's a funny thing, but uh, we're we're and so you got your name on your jacket as well. Yeah, no, it's it's everywhere. But it's we're, we're privileged to be in our backyard and so to speak. Even now, uh, we feel very privileged to be able to be here. You can feel the great ghosts of the past, can't you? The, the great names, at, at, at particularly this racetrack, but all four of them are wonderful. Oh look, there's no doubt about it. Just how the landscape's changed. Obviously, um, look at the grandstand we're sitting in front of now. Um, to see that here compared to the the one that was here before, it's just amazing. Um, the upgrades to the facilities, training tracks in particular, there's they're state of the art, especially here. We wouldn't train anywhere else in Sydney other than other than Randwick. It's um, it's it's our home, and um, you know it's it's that's where we intend to stay. Paul, Peter, uh, congratulations on everything you've achieved so far and all the best going forward. And thanks for going behind the barriers with the Australian Turf Club. Thanks, Tim. Pleasure, Tim.